It looks like the never-ending leaks and rumors were totally accurate. Samsung is jumping from the S10 right to the S20, and there is no S11. So let's get into it. First, there's the 6.2 inch S20, the entry level phone that replaces last year's S10e. Then there's the 6.7 inch S20 Plus, and finally the S20 Ultra that comes in at 6.9 inches. The draw of the Ultra this year is its space zoom lens that allows the phone to hit a ridiculous 100 times zoom. I watched this feature in action briefly, and while it's undeniably impressive, the ridiculously zoomed in photo was blurry, grainy, and just really didn't look that great. There's some interesting technology going on in the background with this feature where the pixels in the sensor get smaller and larger depending on lighting conditions. It's likely that there's a sweet spot in there where the photos still look great, but are also super zoomed. The S20 Plus and the S20 also feature space zoom, but only to 30 times. Sticking with this year's focus on photography and video, all Galaxy S20 series phones can now shoot 8K video and have improved super steady stabilization as well as a new pro video shooting mode that includes manual controls similar to a DSLR. Finally, there's an interesting new single take mode camera feature that automatically captures several photos and video that you can then pick from later. This feature could be really useful for anyone looking to streamline how they create photos and videos for something like a family event. While I definitely need to spend more time with all three devices, one thing is for sure, Samsung's positioning the S20 as a photography powerhouse this year. Beyond photography, there are other interesting things this year as well, including a 120 Hertz dynamic AMOLED display that features a 240 Hertz touch sensor. Similar to other phones that feature this technology, the S20 screen looks buttery smooth and feels extremely responsive. In the context of Canada specifically, it's important to note that the S20, the S20 Plus, and the S20 Ultra will feature 5G connectivity, but it's more future-proofing the phone because 5G just isn't available in Canada yet. The look of the phones has gone largely unchanged, though there are a few notable differences. The front-facing hole-punch camera has shifted to the center top of the display, and there's also now a sizable bump on its rear. The Ultra has the biggest bump thanks to its extra lens, but all three camera bumps share the same design language. Oh, and the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack is totally gone. Samsung's S20 series looks like it's set to be a solid offering this year, as long as the phone's various camera features are worth the upgrade. It's difficult to test a camera in a controlled environment, so while we did take a few shots at this event, we definitely need to spend more time with the S20, the S20 Plus, and the S20 Ultra. We'll have more on all three devices on Mobile Syrup in the coming weeks.